All around India, there are tales of the ancient Hindu datis' phenomenal capabilities. Sri Lanka, a magnificent island nation, is located just south of the Indian subcontinent. A number of UNESCO World Heritage Monuments can be found here, along with stunning landscapes, a diversified culture, and other attractions. The UNESCO World Heritage Site known as Sigiriya, frequently referred to as the eighth wonder of the world, is among Sri Lanka's most spectacular destinations. 650 feet above the town of Dambala in Sri Lanka's Matala district, the ancient city of Sigiriya also stood here. It was built atop a monolithic rock. The site, which has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1982, draws thousands of people every day. The enormous monolithic rock has a perfectly flat top that many people think makes it appear unnaturally shaped. In fact, it almost seems as though it was carved at an exact angle. Join me as we unravel the untold story of this ancient sky city that even the scientists could not explain. And if you like similar contents, please subscribe and turn on that notification button to watch our latest videos in the future. The Lion's Fortress, built in the 5th century AD, is thought to have been the first town on top of Sigiriya, according to modern archaeologists. The majority of the site, including its palaces and gigantic granite water tank, was built at the command of a rebellious monarch by the name of Kashyapa. The locals, however, hold that an ancient Hindu god by the name of Ravana, who belonged to the Asura race of beings, built this ancient place thousands of years earlier. These gods are thought to have ruled over parts of humanity after falling from the heavens. The area around Sigiriya has evidence of human occupancy dating back to the Mesolithic period. Approximately 5,000 years ago, there is also evidence of the different rock shelters and caves in the area. Buddhist monks made use of it in the last several centuries before the Common Era. Despite this, Conventional archaeologists assume that the site was initially used during the reign of King Kashyapa towards the end of the 5th century. Kashyapa was king of Sri Lanka from 473 to 495 CE, and he only rose to power after planning his father's assassination before taking over the kingdom from under his brother, who was the true heir. Legend has it that King Kashyapa fled to the area surrounding Sigiriya out of fear for his life. He built a fortress on top of the megalithic rock, believing it would be inaccessible to his brother's troops. But Kashyapa's army was eventually crushed, and instead of being caught by the invading army, Kashyapa would commit himself. After his death, his brother, Mogalana, donated the site of Sigiriya to Buddhist monks, where it remained a monastery until the 14th century. Sigiriya was abandoned at some point during the 15th century and remained uninhabited. Westerners first found the site when Jonathan Forbes, a major in the British Army, accidentally found it while horseback riding. Several Western archaeological crews carried out modest excavations on the region in the years that followed Forbes' discovery of the old ruins in Sigiriya, and they were dumbfounded by what they discovered. The presence of advanced engineering skills was shown in Sigiriya in a number of ways. The arrangement of the site reveals methods and technology that were considerably more sophisticated than what was considered to be feasible at the time and the ancient city featured one of the best preserved cases of urban design. Builders purposefully used symmetrical and asymmetrical elements in the city's plan to complement the area's natural surroundings. Although archaeologists didn't know the purpose of the different structures at the site, it was generally assumed that they were citadels, palaces, homes, and opulent gardens. The site contains a section that has elements seen throughout Mesoamerica and resembles a step pyramid. 
Another park with additional evidence of sophisticated ancient engineering is located on the west side of the city. An advanced hydraulic system that supplied water to the gardens is one of the park's many water-retaining features. It was clear that much planning went into the creation of this property because it had a distinctive design that included canals, lakes, dams, and even water pumps. Even now, some of these hydraulic systems continue to supply the area with water. Clay bricks were used to construct the numerous constructions discovered atop the monolithic rock. There were no indications of any stairways leading from the bottom to the top, which surprises archaeologists as they try to explain how the ancient builders carried an estimated 3 million bricks to the top of the cliff. The metal stairways that are still in place today were only constructed in the past century to allow visitors to the site. It appears to be a near impossible task without a decent stairway to the top to find a path up the monolithic rock and through the dense forest to carry the bricks or the supplies needed to construct them. The enormous chunks of white marble that make up much of the settlement's roads and palace stairs are even more fascinating than the sight stunning display of bricks, which is undoubtedly an astonishing feature. Archaeologists are still unaware of where the white marble came from, which was used in the construction but is not indigenous to the region. The marble blocks weigh a great deal, and there are thousands of them. So, where did these historic builders get such massive, heavy marble blocks? Without any stairs, reach the summit of the massive rock. This has caused a lot of people to doubt the archaeological theory of how this ancient metropolis was constructed. How could prehistoric peoples move tons of items there without a clear pathway when it still takes up to two hours to climb the current metal stairs at the site? Numerous archaeologists have observed odd tool marks that resemble confined tubes running along the side of the rock. Archaeologists have determined that these patterns were engraved in the beginning of time. However, there is no explanation for how they were carved into the rock in locations where there are no slopes for people to stand. Near its peak, the monolithic rock has large, round holes carved into it. Once more, archaeologists are at a loss to explain how these holes were made with such crude instruments. In addition, there are these odd groove marks right next to the drilled holes. They still have no known purpose or method of manufacture. Another drill hole that penetrates the rock quite deeply is located just next to the groove marks. All of these unusual markings appear to have been carved into the rock by sophisticated machinery that may have even melted or drilled it. The site's unique drill holes, marble blocks, or even the bricks are not the thing that stands out the most. Instead, there is a big granite water tank in the midst of the area. The construction of this water tank initially gives the impression that it is built of granite stones. However, when you go closer to the tank, you notice that it is actually cut into the incredibly hard granite rock. 90 feet long, 68 feet broad, and nearly seven feet deep depict the enormous tank. This implies that the construction would have required the manual removal of more than 3,500 tons of stone. One of the hardest stones on Earth is granite. It would have taken years to remove if ancient humans had been employing simple chisels and hammers. So, are we looking at proof of some type of advanced technology? Or did ancient craftsmen truly grind away for years to hollow out this granite tank? There are no chisel or hammer marks visible on the granite pool, which may be seen if you visit the location and examine it. In their place, you can make out extensive stretches of scoop-shaped marks that mimic those found at megalithic sites in Egypt and Peru. The periodic structure of rocks can be altered, making them softer and much simpler to shape and carve. According to many researchers who have speculated 
that the ancient builders understood how to do this. Could this be how they managed to remove so much stone off Sidria's summit? The tank's unique characteristic of never drying out applies even during Sri Lanka's tremendously hot season. Even to us with our advanced technology, the fact that the water always stays in the tank is a feat of engineering. The process of percolation, in which liquid slowly flows past a filter, seems to be how the tank gathers water. The tank, however, also has a drainage system below it that makes sure it never overflows, even during Sri Lanka's rainy monsoon season. Many unsolved questions are raised by all of these engineering wonders. With regards to the Sigiri ear development location, all evidence points to the fact that we are looking at a far older site, potentially even one that was inhabited before the last ice age, from different strange scoop marks on the granite to the enormous quantity of material needed to build the numerous structures. Possibly the remains of a long since gone ancient civilization that was wiped out by a flood or other natural disaster can be found at Sigiriya. Alternatively, may this location, perched high in the sky, have served as a sanctuary during the flood. The inhabitants not only believe this, but tales say that it was the creation of not only an advanced civilization, but one that descended from the sky. As we already stated, there is no evidence of historic steps going to the structure's peak. Many researchers have proposed that the lack of stairs, the ancient builders of this site may have had anti-gravity technologies and possibly even flying aircraft. This is a notion that can be found in several local traditions in the area. Legend has it that the city of Sigiriya was built by a group of deities who descended from the sky. When they arrived on Earth, they built Sigiriya after the temple of their god Kuvara, the god of wealth. Visitors can rest assured that Sigiriya is the residence of Ravana, an ancient Sri Lankan god king, according to a number of other local stories. The tale also claims that Ravana used the large granite tank as a bathing pool and that he also constructed the oldest parts of the site. Ancient scriptures discovered in Sri Lanka and India claim that Ravana was not born as a typical human, but rather that his ancestors had descended from the heavens. According to legend, Ravana was a member of the Asura race, a group that Indian traditions depict as being composed of strong superhuman demigods who arrived on Earth thousands of years ago. Many people think these tales are not simply myths, but also old genuine reports of extraterrestrials that visited Earth. Is it feasible that Sigiriya was first constructed by Asuras? The city's construction required a lot of material, so who lifted it all but builders with advanced technology? Numerous references to Vimanas, the flying machines the gods used to soar between heaven and earth and around the globe, can be found throughout Hindu mythology. The Mahabharata, one of India's sacred writings, mentions aerial cities that belong to the Asuras, a race of gods that includes Ravana. Is it conceivable that the Asuras employed Vimanis to help with the building of the city of Sigiriya? According to certain texts, the Asuras were hybrid beings, and Ravana himself is occasionally described in Hindu mythology as a reptile god. Some of the clues to the mystery of his real identity could be found in the city of Sigiriya. The first thing you notice as you approach Sigiriya's entrance are two enormous carved feet. These are known as lion's claws by the locals. Lions, however, have five huge claws and one little claw. Three claws are present in Sigiriya, leading many to speculate that a reptilian-looking creature is what they are actually depicting. Three huge toes were a common feature of prehistoric reptiles and we can see this right at Sigiriya's entryway. These feet are sometimes referred to as Ravana's feet by locals. Could this imply that Ravana was a reptilian-human hybrid? 
Ravana was allegedly not a true human being, only his father was, according to some old traditions. His mother, on the other hand, may have been a reptile and belonged to an entirely other species. Ravana was allegedly of a hybrid species when he was born. Some have even proposed a connection between Ravana and the giants known as Nephilim in early Christian and Hebrew literature. Ravana was known to have several characteristics common to humans, yet some of those characteristics were unusual. Ravana was at least 10 feet tall, and among his more intriguing characteristics was his capacity for shape-shifting and the ability to fool others. Those who were classified as reptilian frequently expressed this theme. The legends surrounding Sri Lanka and Sigiri grow more thrilling as you read more ancient books. What do you think of Sigiriya's historical site? Was it created with simple tools by early people? Or is the tale not complete? Without the use of any advanced equipment, was it possible for people to carry over three million marble bricks to the summit of the rock and to cut out and remove three and a half tons of granite without using any stairs? Do you believe traditional archaeologists were mistaken to date the construction of this structure to the 5th century? Please share your thoughts in the comment box below. Likewise, let us know what other mysteries you would like us to explore in our upcoming video. We are always open to your suggestions. To ensure that you don't miss any of our next videos, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button after liking this video if you found it to be interesting.